Welcome in. It's a free for all Friday. You're locked on UConn. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. A little housekeeping for me. My YouTube support has been amazing. Keep that going. New followers every day. I'd love to have all of those subscribers also download the audio version. So get on over to Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, iHeartRadio, whatever it is, you know, uh, I, there's probably a million different places you can get it. So this way you'll never miss a moment of Locked on UConn. Can't tell you how much that support means to me. It's everything. Also, if you can give us a five-star review whenever you get a chance, that would be fantastic. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked on College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. On today's show, we bring in one of UConn Twitter's shining stars, a friend of mine. He's a funny, obnoxious, tenacious, and happy to call a friend you know him as Big Larry Forearm, the captain of UConn's ship, always talking in, in, in a positive way about UConn athletics. Let's bring in our guy right now. How we doing, my man? Let me ask you this question right off the, right off the bat. You, sure. you, probably did, you probably did a ballot for a UConn Twitter GOAT, right? Or if you didn't, you saw it. Let's revisit the impact of Chris Smith. He's now the head coach of Stars right. of Stores. From the TBT, where do you rank him in your top 10? And can a couple of old guys maybe educate some of the young guys that listen about where we be without Chris Smith? Sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for uh, the, uh, the warm welcome and, and call me tenacious. I've heard of kind of similar to Jack Black. So uh, that compliment <laughs> is, uh, is very, uh, very thank uh appreciated. Um, so as far as Christmas concerned is, um, so kind of, I, I'm, I, I'm a little bit older. Um, you know, I grew up, uh, with a kind of my background, my, my dad and mom went to university of Connecticut, uh, and my dad kind of, um, was a huge basketball nut. Um, they were good friends with, uh, a player uh, on the team called by the name of Anthony Buddy Bozinski, uh, really good guy. Um, and good center. But, um, my dad was always bring me to, to games and, kind of around basketball and, and going to the, to the field house and, and watching, um, starting with the, the Dom Perno, Perno teams, um, you know, just bringing me around and, and introducing me to his passion, which was UConn basketball. So when it, when it comes down to Chris Smith, um, you know, it's kind of an interesting story. My, my dad was a, a pharmacist at St. Rayfield's Hospital in New Haven, and um, he was really – uh, interactive with the um, the pharmacy runners there, which were all pretty much inner city kids from New Haven um, that uh, really loved basketball. And, um, you know, and my dad would bring me to the pharmacy, um, you know, sometimes at St. Rayfield's to hang out. And, and, you know, it was back then when there's no babysitters or whatever. So I would talk basketball with the, with these guys. And, uh, you know, I was a huge fan. I I, I went and went to see games. And I, you know, my dad would tell me about Corny Thompson, uh, which is another Connecticut player, um, I believe from Middletown. And one of my favorite players uh, at the time was Earl Kelly, um, a kid from New Haven. Um, you know, and, and these guys knew him personally. And uh, when we got Chris Smith, um, you know, these guys – like lit up and they just told me you got we just got a, a bad dude a bad bad basketball player um from bridgeport one of the best that we've we've ever seen in connecticut uh and i was like i had already i had already loved Earl kelly and kind of knew um you know that what kind of player he was but like i was like I, was, I started getting really excited um and they're like this this guy's gonna change change the uh dynamics of uconn basketball um and I, I was how, like, let me ask you a question. I don't mean to yeah. cut you off. How old? How old are you during this time? Were you? Because I'm trying to place. You know where I was. I was. I think I was almost was 80, 89, 90. So I'm probably nine, ten years old, and that's kind of like my inception into like really yeah. enjoying basketball. Like, what about you? Yeah. So uh, I'm kind of a little bit older, but not much. Um, 
you know, I was about probably about nine or 10 when uh, I was really getting introduced to, um, you know, the first real team I re- remember was the, uh, the year before Calhoun came in, it was like 84, 85 mm-hmm. with like uh, Earl Kelly and, and some of those guys, Phil Gamble. Um, but yeah, so I was, I, I was like a, a young kid. I was like in little league, uh, you know, just uh, fascinated with basketball and um, just hearing, hearing over and over again, how good this, this kid was. And I think of the time he had a couple other offers, um, you know, in the big East, I, I think maybe two or three um, and that we got them, we got this homegrown kid and we, we had done it in the past, you know, with Earl Kelly and Corny Thompson and, way back uh in the day but this kid was special and this kid was an elite level player whereas like you know earl kelly was good he was a great player but he wasn't elite this kid could have went any pretty much anywhere you know and uh, we got him you know we, we got him to stay home so um you know think about for the younger people uh keeping a kid like Klingon. this was the first yeah we we kept a kid that was a baller that balled out in Bridgeport. Um, and that was getting recognition around the Northeast, um, you know, in regionally, um, and could have went elsewhere. So, um, yeah, I believe the, the story with that is he was, he was being heavily recruited by Syracuse. Right. And that was the number one choice. And then he went back to his, you know, his family and they were like, I mean, I think his mom said something to him, like, you know, we're not going to be able to come to watch like any of your games. Right. So that was a big part of it is he was like, well, man, like I want my mom to come to my games and like, you know, my buddies and stuff like that. So at least that's the way I understood it. And then I got it confirmed uh, listening to Matt's podcast, Dream Season Pod, kind of listening to some of those interviews. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. I think I, the great analogy, too, about like for younger fans, like this is this is like if we lost Klingon to Georgetown. Right. You know, or, 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 or somebody else <laughs> or Syracuse or whoever. Right. I mean, it's. You don't you don't you don't lose homegrown talent. So that's uh what did what did Hurley say on the draft? He's like, if we didn't get Hurley, my entire staff was gonna get fired. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. If we didn't I get Klingon. I, I think uh I think Cal after meeting Chris, uh, I mean I'm sure you've met him. Dude's just a great dude, but he was tenacious. Um and like he just fit Calhoun to a to a T too. I can't imagine like that guy playing zone do you think <laughs> in Syracuse, like and just yeah, getting lost true. in series with Bayheim. Get out of here. <laughs> no, it's 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 so true. Um, where did you? I mean, I, I asked you where you thought he actually I didn't ask you this. I had him um I think I had him seven or eight all time. And I and I kind of and I and I'll be honest with you, and I, I think I told him this via email because he was probably because he probably was like, dude, where you what's up? Like, because well, I had him on the show and for like a 10 minute segment, and I was talking about how he's got to be in the top, you know, top five. And then I started doing like doing the actual exercise. And I was like, man, it's really tough to put him in the top five. It just is when you like, when you, when you break it down, I, I could, I could justify it. If someone has him one, I, you can justify it. You know what I mean? So I'm curious what your thoughts are. So, so it's interesting because it it comes down to two things, right? The, the player's ability and, and, in what they did on on the court right like i'm a big win championship guy you know sure never won a championship but i'm also a guy that says like do we do we end up winning any championships if he didn't come to connecticut that's that's the question right i don't think we do um to me he he's one of the go he like he's he's mount rushmore um for me you're talking about a kid. I, I think freshman year he, he averaged like nine points a game, but then he jumped to seventeen, and then nineteen, and then I think he the last year or whatever it was twenty something. Like, yep. and that was in a very good Big East. Um, it's tough to say you. someone that's scoring seventeen points in the Big East in a tough Big East uh, isn't pretty special. Um, yeah. I don't know. We might, have, we might have to do that exercise again and uh, and get his get his numbers popped up because I, and I don't you know like I, when it comes to like those like it's not silly but like when we it, but it is it is also silly that we rate the players like they're all great in their own right right if you if you played if you put on a UConn jersey whether in the Calhoun era Don Perno era Hurley era Ke- Ke- Kevin Ollie era you were a great player 
you were a great player at a, to a certain level. And then there's the guys who elevated to titles, sweet 16s, final fours, like all that stuff. So I don't know. It's tough. It's, it's tough to not have the leading score in UConn history, not in the top five, but uh, yeah. I still, I, I struggle with my vote. <laughs> I, I do too. Like when they, when they had it and I forgot, I actually forgot Karan Butler when I did mine. Um, yeah. I, I, I couldn't believe I did that, but um, my question, my next question though, is if Chris Smith doesn't come to UConn, do we end up with Scott Burrell? Yeah, I mean that's another one. It's true because because and 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 when you ask those questions, I think you're so spot on. And I'm not I'm not comparing myself to this, but what I can tell you from playing at a high level of a sport, if you're a good player and you see another good player go somewhere, you want to go to that place because you want to follow in that footsteps or right. challenge yourself to 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 follow in their footsteps, follow in their legacy. Better better players want to be around better players. Like it's just in any sport. We could talk any, you could talk lacrosse, you could talk swimming. It doesn't matter. Like, you want to be a competing against the best. So, if you, you're right, if we lose Chris Smith to Syracuse, does Scott Burrell even show up to UConn? Probably not. Yeah, it, 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 to me, that's why he's he's on Mount Rushmore. It doesn't really matter. After meeting him, he, he's, um, he's even, I mean, he's cemented in Mount, Mount Rushmore. It, it, um, sometimes they say don't meet your heroes, and like when you when you do meet your heroes, and and they're like just as good of nice of guys, um, and just that aura like still is there. It's it's something. I've met I've met plenty of heroes that I thought were my heroes that were the opposite way, you know. That for were sure. Kind of like, no, uh, I I agree with you. Um, well, we're gonna talk. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and, and pay some bills, but we're sure. going to talk about Chris and his new team, the Stars of Stores and the TBT coming up. Hell yeah. This. Hey, UConn fans. Summer is the perfect time to catch a Major League Baseball game, and I absolutely love going to the ballpark. One of my favorite memories is when I would saw a walk-off home run that had the whole stadium roaring. By the way, it was at Yankee Stadium. Sorry, Red Sox fans. I'm looking forward to making more memories this year. There's an awesome way to get your tickets, Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, making it super easy to get your tickets. One of the coolest things that prices in the Game Time app actually go down as it gets closer to the first pitch. It's literally like getting rewarded for procrastination. I've been browsing up through the Game Time app. It's fantastic. I saw some amazing deals for... Upcoming games for a lot of uh, Yankees and Red Sox fans are in the UConn uh, audience. So I think there's some good prices right now for next weekend, something you don't want to miss. One of my favorite features is the view from your seat. All in pricing, you see the total cost up front, so no hidden fees. Game time also offers some unique perks for flash deals and zone deals. Save up to 60% of buying last minute. So if you're looking to catch a game this summer, check out game time. It's easy, convenient. And you'll be and you'll get the best deals out there. Download the Game Time app and make some unforgettable memories at the ballpark. The Feel Good Lab, one of my biggest supporters, Ryan Gresh and his buddies. Did you know that some the same things that fuel the best athletes in the world can still help the rest of us? Just ask Cam Spencer, who does every little thing he can to dial in his wellness, reduce inflammation in his body, and make sure he's eating foods that fuel him. And he's doing a damn good job in the summer league. I chose to partner with the Feel Good Lab because I wanted to elevate my performance, improve my health, and become more educated on nutrition. Since we started working together, all those goals have been reached. Now, I'm continuing to find new ways to get better with the Feel Good team, and I'm very grateful for their partnership. And Cam couldn't have, couldn't have said it any better there. This is exactly why I wanted to partner with Ryan in the Feel Good Lab. Their plant-based pain relief and recovery tools, the highest quality supplements, and an at-home diagnostic test that measures what foods my body triggers inflammation. Plus, they're an official partner of UConn Basketball. Can't beat that. I'm on my sixth week of my wellness journey, and so far I feel amazing. So go ahead on the website, feelgoodlab.com. Use the code CAMSPENCER for 12% off your order and 10% donation to Bleeding Blue for Good. So that means if you buy something, get your 12% off, and 10% of that goes to Bleeding Blue for Good. And he's back, Larry. How are you? You have gotten some uh, some good stuff from the Feel Good Lab, right? You wanna you wanna 
give Ryan uh, and, and his uh, and his people a little plug on, on what they what they got going on at the Feel Good Lab? Absolutely. I, I've had some health problems this uh, this year, and uh, Ryan touched base with me and uh, really um, sat down. And we I think we talked for like an hour and a half, um, and he, he hooked me up with some of their products, uh, you know, and, and kind of went over you know what they do and, and what how they would help me and, and so forth and. Uh, I also started a, a health journey this this year, and um, you know a lot of the, the gut health stuff is is super important um, in, in pro, probiotics and and so forth. So, uh, very appreciative of Ryan and his team, and, and I felt great since I started using it. Um, their pain cream is is one of the best. I don't know if you, I'm I'm old, so I, I hurt myself uh, sleeping nowadays. So I throw that pain <laughs> cream on like it's it's my job. Uh, yep. But I, I will. I'll tell you one thing. Don't don't use the pain cream like I did. I I hopped out of the shower once, and uh, when you start getting old like me, you start getting bags everywhere. You get bags under your eyes, and you're trying to fix things. And you know, I I bought some uh, some cream that had some caffeine in it to rub under my eyes, get rid of these bags before I went out. You know, I was trying to look sharp, uh, and uh, I, I picked up the wrong uh, cream and and used some of that pain cream on my eyes, and ended up. <laughs> coming out like i look like uh, I 24 hours at uh, snoop dog oh my god dude that and that and that pain relief cream is no joke it like has a it's kind of an interesting one like when you rub it like i have plantar fasciitis i'll put it on my feet right and like it it just start you can just start to feel it kind of almost like if you have like a hot wing like uh yeah, it's like yeah. dude, that's that's too too hot and you start to feel your your, your like you're like oh god and it, so I can't imagine putting that on my eyes, dude. That's, oh, it was all wild. up in my eyes. I mean, my eyes felt great after the cream worked. So like no pain in the <laughs> eyes whatsoever. But <laughs> That's <laughs> wild, man. Yeah. Well, feel good lab. Definitely guys. I, I hope everyone uh, definitely checks them out. They were on uh, good morning America. So, I mean, it's a, it's a legit product, uh, Connecticut based. They obviously are an official sponsor for UConn basketball. So Best I think some of the, play, some of the players are starting to get with Ryan. So listen, it's not just, us old farts it's a uh, high high impact athletes that are using it to to kind of put them in the best position possible so definitely go and check them out and be- um, best pain cream i've ever used it doesn't by far smell like you don't smell like your uh your 12 year old catechism teacher like a mothball afterwards <laughs> it's just, it's amazing. that's a great that's a great reference by the way um <laughs> so how much how let me ask you this question let me let me let me steer the ship back to the show um what uh what did you know about TBT and like when they when UConn started you know kicking the tires on potentially putting Mark D'Amelio and his people put together the stars of stores uh how much did you know about TBT were you a fan of it before or uh is this brand new to you yeah so I'm a, I'm kind of a degenerate gam- gambler so uh if there's sports on no, I'm gonna watch it I'm gonna bet on it usually if I can yeah um and, and especially during the summer like I'm a baseball fan but like I, I don't know. Like I, I watch the Red Sox, but I'm in mm-hmm. Colorado. It's tough to, I, I don't get into the Rockies or whatever. So I'll watch whatever's on. Um, you know, I, I watched the TBT tournament um, for several years and I've always wondered why we didn't have a team. Um, sure. I'm a stoked. Someone reached out to Mark and uh, I really appreciate it of all that Mark, Mark does and that Mark put together a team. And I, uh, you know, it was a ton of, a ton of work there and, and hard work. And uh, I'm, I'm just excited that, that we have, representatives there um this year um i know it's not a full yukon team but uh for the first year i think he got a lot of did good, good players job. in yukon yeah he did a great job i mean it's only going to get better over the course of time and, and maybe it will have a 100 percent yukon team at some point but uh what the, he did this thing, year was amazing no you're right and the other thing too is we had him on on the 15th earlier this week to kind of talk about it and we were trying to get um, – I'll tell you a quick funny story, a little inside baseball. So I was texting with Mark yesterday, you know, after their event and practice, and they were dry, they were on the bus to Pittsburgh. And I was like, hey, I was like, do you think we can get one of the guys on on the ride? And he was just like, does it matter if they're on the bus? And I was like, I don't care if you guys pass a yeah. phone around on the bus and just get a bunch of these guys on. And we were ready to do it, and he texted me and said, hey, I hate to break this to you, but everybody on this bus has passed out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Don't wake anybody up. You're fine. Uh, we'll we'll I'll do a solo show. It's cool. So I hope everyone's rested and snuggled in their beds in Pittsburgh and had a nice steak for dinner last night or whatever it was. But uh, so we're gonna we're gonna try to uh, get some of these guys on the show uh, at, during the tournament because 
let's be honest. I think they have a good shot. The only thing I've been, the only thing I've told folks in some of the some of the vibes around the team, at least from the the interviews yesterday um, with the, with the media that was covering it, was that it seemed like the, the team was in pretty in pretty good shape. That Chris and the staff, like Tyler Olander and, the, and those guys and his son, were pretty shocked at like how good a shape people were in. Some people had some nagging injuries because a lot of these teams come in and they have guys who have names and these players don't really know each other and they have right. a hard time with co- with cohesion. So they were actually pretty. And, and we got some younger guys like Joey Calcaterra literally just played in, in college, right? You have um, Ryan Boatwright, who's not who's not an old guy, but he's no spring chicken. Rodney Purvis looks like from p- people talk about it, he looks probably the best on the team in terms of like physicality and, and his speed. Jeff Adrian is showing that when playing overseas, he's he's got a jumper. He's, you know, hitting threes and stuff. So I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm excited. Like of, of the guys that you know on this team, who are you excited to see play again? Uh, it's interesting because I just looked at it. Um, it, it. There's a couple. All Purvis is one of them. Um, um, Daniels is another. Um, DeAndre, yeah, yeah. Like um, I'm actually, I, I, I was a big Jeff Adrian fan too. I'm excited to see him. I'm, I'm happy to see RJ Cole out there too. Um, oh yeah, pretty much all of them. Um, I actually like the kid from Baylor too. He's a. He, I mean, he, I know this is a UConn podcast, but um, I think yeah, please do. Role. Yeah, yeah I mean, dude, that's, that's you got to. You, you got, and here's the thing that Mark explained it. He was like, you can't just have, because you went to UConn, you can't just be in this tournament. Like, if, you know, even he said that he was texting with Adama Sonogo, the NBA doesn't let TBT guys. Yeah, play they, don't the let TV, they, don't, TV, yeah. they don't let them play in the TBT. So, um, Adama couldn't play. You know, we couldn't get all UConn guys because part of it is you have to be in UConn, you have to be in, in shape. You have to actually be in basketball shape. You can't come. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I mean, like you can't just be like, "Hey, I'm seven foot, and you know, I played or whatever." Like he was like talking about Jake Vosco, like not couldn't do it, like he's just not ready to play. Like that that kind of player would be awesome to see play again, but also don't want to see him get hurt either, right? Um, or or tra- Travis, not, I was thinking Travis Knight, but uh, he's probably he's uh, a little older, man. That's that's yeah, this, yeah, that's yeah. pushing it. <laughs> he went to that's he went to it. school with me, so I, I I know what he what type of shape he's in, so. Yeah, I saw I saw Travis Knight in New York City when he played for um for the Knicks back in the day when I was living living in uh in, in the city and uh, we said what's up to him and he was just like like peace out like jumped in a cab and I was just like all right man like I was like come on man. I was about, about to buy you drinks he he was not having any of it yeah, <laughs> he's, not- he's he's more into the hippie lettuce type of stuff but oh yeah <laughs> absolutely um but yeah I'm I'm excited man right now UConn is such a vibe um. You know, before we get into the last segment, which I have some fun with you and I ask you some silly questions, um, the the idea around UConn, like all the stuff, I, I I hate that I'm not in the state of Connecticut anymore right now. This is yeah. the only time I've I've ever felt longing to be back in my in my hometown, home area, right. because it's su- it's such a vibe. I don't I don't love Connecticut taxes. I don't love some things about Connecticut. But I do love UConn basketball and like the vibe around this team right now and the vibe around the fans that are into this. It's just new fans, old fans. It's just can you describe what it's like for guys like you and me who are not like there? Like, is do we have do we have serious FOMO or like or or, it, or could you describe it as something else? It, it's serious FOMO. Uh, like last night, I was uh, you know I love the guys from the Husky Ticket Project. I, I try to support yep. them as much as possible. Um, and, and they've been good and kind to of me. Uh, but like, like that event, I was just like, I want to be like, I was like, should I drive out there? I'm like, <laughs> right. Uh, it, it's crazy. And um, I, I have season tickets too, to um, like football, baseball and, and basketball. And, um, you know, I, I just, I'll, I'll make one game a year and it's just like, man, I, I just, uh, I, I just, anytime they're talking about like an event on plat or, 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 you know, a pre-event or, or people gathering at um, Timothy's or what, whatever. I just like, um, I start like scratching myself. Like, <laughs> okay. like I, I don't know what to do. It just, um, it just, uh, it, it's tough. I, it, it, and the vibe's so good right now. Like I, all I want to do is like listen to sports talk radio. Um, you know, that was a big thing when I was growing up too, was listening to uh, yeah. Joe, Joey D on, um, WTIC and, and 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 hearing about you know UConn UConn or UConn basketball and um, 
I, I just can't get my fix out in Colorado. You know, I, I'm, I'm caught watch. I like, I, I love your lockdown. I watch it there. Uh, you know, when I'm usually uh, kind of coming down in the gym in the sun every day, I'll, I'll watch it. But like, other than that, I'm watching like yeah, YouTube old some. videos and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 what is it like a couple days ago? I, I literally listed, you know, cause we're in, we're in such like a gap right now. Right. I know UConn football is about to start in a month. And by the way, I, I announced yesterday, I don't know if you heard it, um, we're, I haven't said who the hosts are going to be, but I'm I'm gonna I'm doing a weekly UConn football show awesome. starting nice. August 16th. Okay. Um, of which that listen, I I've told this to everybody that watches this. I am a basketball guy, so not that I don't know football. I'm a Giants fan. I can talk NFL football and college football all day, but specific to UConn, I wanted people to come in and say this is a UConn football show. So I have two. Definitely one, maybe two that do a national show that focuses on UConn. They're going to come in as hosts, as not necessarily guest hosts, but initially I'm going to I'm going to be on. But I hope I can just kind of like hand the reins off to them, and they can do this weekly locked on UConn football show every Friday before before the games, obviously. So it would, it would we'll probably record a couple of days before, drop it Friday morning, so there's like a football Friday show, and then maybe do like a reaction show on a Monday, like a Monday yeah. evening or something like that. So that's. That's hopefully so that the really diehard UConn and Connecticut fans can understand that I'm not neglecting football. It's just not my expertise. I mean, that'd be incredible. Um, I'm also, uh, if you, if you want like that first show, I'll give, uh, you can give away uh, my, my two, um, two tickets uh, for opening, opening day with the parking pass. Uh, okay. Uh, so if, if, if that's interested, I'll just, uh, I'll throw that into the mix and they can give them. That's out. awesome, man. We can, we can definitely do that. We, um, we can definitely talk about that because it'll be two weeks before the opener at Maryland. Um, and then what's the, uh, who's the first game against at, at the rent? I can't recall who we got the first one. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. I, I, I'm going to try. I've, I've actually never been to the rent. Um, yeah. Which is kind of crazy. So I'm going to try and make it this year, but, uh, yeah, that, that's cool. Well, I appreciate that, man. We'll definitely, we'll definitely hook up offline and I'll, um, we can definitely uh, figure out the details for a lucky uh, UConn fan to go to the game. I appreciate so, that. So let me ask you this question back. Um, so yeah, you asked please. me, uh, like, how how do you like? Uh, does this show help you with FOMO? Like, because you get to talk about UConn, kinda. Like, yeah, it really? does. It, yeah. No, you're right. It does. It does. It does because it keeps me closer to the team. Right. Um, like I, I'm hoping. You know, we, we started this UConn Insider program. And I'm, I really don't care if it ends up being like a free program forever because it's like it's essentially four months for free right now. So if you sign up uh, for subtext, you, you basically get access like text with me. Right. You, not my it's it's just a it's a it's a number that we would text back and forth. And the reason why I say that about the FOMO is I'm going to do that during the regular season during game days. Like I want to have game day chats with people like literally like play by play <laughs> like. In the game, like we're watch all watching these games, especially like guys like you and me who don't live in Connecticut, maybe we're not there. But like, what are we? What are we seeing? Like, are we? Are we? Are we getting? You know, are we getting a, a crappy whistle? Are we? You know, are, are we dominating the way we should against like a really bad Georgetown or DePaul team? Like that kind of stuff. Like so, game day conversations. I'm really looking forward to hopefully connecting with more UConn fans. But yeah, I mean, it definitely helps because people have reached out and and been really supportive and helpful. Um, also kind of be talking to get other guests and national people about UConn and getting the the love and the recognition they deserve. So yeah, I, that's a good question. It definitely helps. I, I doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't go away when we see the event like last night and like my buddy, uh, Chris Smith, not the real Chris Smith, my, my buddy, Chris Smith from, from Meriden and, uh, Brian Fred Frederick from Meriden over there taking pictures of Dan early. And I'm like, ah, oh, I want to, I, I want to could be right there. Uh, but, it, and, and re something real quick on that. I sent, um, if you guys don't know who I'm talking about, I've mentioned him probably a hundred times on this podcast, Chris Smith for, uh, married my, one of my cousins. And, um, so they have two beautiful children. They, uh, they live in, they live in Meriden and there's a picture that she posted on social media of Chris and coach early. And he looks so excited and so happy <laughs> that she was just like, he, I don't even think I've seen this, this face, even when I've. Uh, bore his children so <laughs> that's that's the vibe around you gone right now that like a simple picture with dan hurley makes you cheese from ear to ear 
That's and right. uh, I definitely get FOMO when I see stuff like that for sure. Yeah, he, he he's a good guy. Uh, I, I I was uh, PMing him last night because uh, we were talking about um, you know my FOMO and uh, it was talking about uh, that event. And uh, he brought up uh, something interesting about you. Um, oh yeah, what's up? Yeah, he told me that you were a five star uh, power forward at St. Lawrence Middle School back in the day. Is that? Is I was that a good correct? basketball player. Sure. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I was, I, I was a, uh, I didn't grow. That's the problem. Like I was, you know, us, right. uh, us, the, my heritage probably prevents me from, uh, from, from being very tall. Like I have, uh, I have a very short mother and, um, I played one, I got recruited to go to St. Laurent and Meriden, uh, to go, to go play in the, the CYO league. And, uh, I was like the, the sharpshooter and, uh, and, one year at, at Catholic school, I was like, I can't deal with these num- nuns, man. I went back to public school. <laughs> I mean, some, some would say you're the Chris Smith of St. Laurent Middle School. Uh, that would that would be, yes. Um, and I'll tell you a quick funny story before we get to the last segment is uh, how I how I left St. Laurent is uh, is is legendary. Um, I, uh, I I just I, I knew I was leaving and uh, there was a, a kid that was in eighth grade. I was in seventh grade at the time who was kind of being a, a jerk and kind of picking on me and stuff like that. And uh, I, I went home and told my parents about it. And my dad was just like, if he provokes you, he's like, and you, you know, you have to do something about it. He's like, I'm not right, going to be upset right, about right. it. And so, but, so that was my trigger. I was like, well, I'm leaving anyway. So I, I came to the school the next day and I told the kid, I walked up to him and I said, I'm going to kick your ass today. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so the, the story I told was that I, I mean, I did get, I wouldn't call it bullied, but I did get picked on. I was a short kid or whatever. So I just went up to the dude and like, you know, we, fought and i socked him and i you know had him in a headlock because i was a short kid and uh they pulled us away and that was it but that was the last time i set foot at st lauren is i i was kind of giving the kid the high business. Note. i like that yeah yeah that's uh that's my that's my personality to a t um but i want to find out some fun stuff about you larry coming up after this No, such a quick transition. We're ready. I played this game with almost all the guests. It's who do you want? I give you scenarios of all it's all Yukon based questions. So no matter what question I ask, you got to give me people that you want that are in Yukon lore. It could be men or women. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, the first one is super easy. I bought a I bought a minivan for my growing family uh, okay. about a month ago. And I said, okay. I was driving and I said, this thing, I mean, I could fit like eight normal sized people in here, but basketball wise, probably like four, seven, seven, seven college. I had a big bluey caravan and we fit seven dudes in a keg. So eight yeah. people or seven, seven in the keg. Yes. And, but they were probably normal size, non yeah. <laughs> U- UConn basketball players. So right, I was right. thinking like you could pick four, like four UConn, but unless you have all, Kemba, Ryan, um, you know, all the guards, you're probably going to have some big dudes there. So, you know, if you have Donovan and Jeff Adrian, that's like that's like four people right there. So I want four people that you're driving this minivan. It's a Kia. You're driving cross country and you get four people to pick uh, to come with you. Uh, sure. So I've seen your show, so I prepared for this. I thought long and hard <laughs> about this in the, in the deep, uh, deep Zen like um of the uh sauna at the uh the gym so uh uh first of all i'm going with uh gino and calhoun um, oh wow get them both in the band and uh i just want to be driving and, and have that moment where you know i'm like farley uh, driving the bus and billy madison and i'll turn around and you know hell and i'll turn this this bus around they don't start stop fighting oh um, my god that's awesome so so that's the first two that i'd have and i make them sit and right next to each other and work work some stuff out um and then the next one i I, uh i brought him up at the beginning is um is uh uh my guy uh buddy bazinski uh a a former uconn player uh back when my mom and 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 dad were at school and the reason for that is they were good friends when they went to went to school there uh anthony buddy bazinski is the name um he was a good player, um, nice guy. But uh, like, I just to find out what my mom and dad were like in college. So that would that was, be interesting. Yeah, yeah. So that that's uh, that's one of the choices I'd pick. And then the last one would be Uncle Spliffy. 
because I want that Scooby Doo van with, uh, especially with Gino and Calhoun, maybe mellow them out. <laughs> Cliff <laughs> Robinson uh, is my fourth, um, and just I like it. I, I don't know. It'd be it'd be the most interesting conversation. You'd have the fighting going on. I'd be finding out about what my parents were doing. Not hopefully not too much stuff, but uh, <laughs> and then Uncle Uncle Spliffy just bringing down the vibe. You know. I love that. Um, I, 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 you know, it's probably one of the saddest things is, uh, is, is Cliff being, not being with us anymore. Um, just he's, he is, was the, you know, the epitome of kind of what UConn started to ascend when, you know, you're talking about these, these players that Calhoun was getting, um, and kind of put UConn on the map. So just and, like and, I mean, he, he could have played in any era too, which is the best thing about him. Because uh, nowadays he he'd almost I think he'd be like a number one pick in the draft if you think about like what he does. I mean, he was a six ten um, swing guy, um, you know. And yeah. in, in today's game, that's I mean, that's what it, what it's all about. That's what we're um, looking for, yeah. Especially I'm I don't sure, know. If you saw, did you see? Have you seen the uh, the uh, Olympic uh, pictures? And they, and they have Kevin Garnett. Uh, or not, Katie, or Katie um, Durant, and uh, there he Durant's like pretty much on the same level as some of those oh, guys. Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, so are you seven two? He's like, "No, I'm I'm six nine. Like these yeah. guys are lying, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so well, okay, this is a, this is a segue. Let me ask you this question. I've had this conversation with people before, and a buddy of mine who's a comedian always gives me crap for it. Cause he's like, Oh, you're five, eight. I'm like, dude, I'm not five, eight. I'm five. Like I'm literally uh, flat footed. I'm five, 10, five, 11, somewhere in that range. But yeah, if you put yeah, shoes yeah. on me, you put shoes on me. I mean, I'm six. I might as well be six foot. Like, how do you, how do you justify height? I don't understand the whole, you know, like we're, we're at a combine. Do these kids, do these kids play basketball in their bare feet? Are they playing beach volleyball? Like what's what the actual height is what you're wearing on the court. Yeah, it's it's like uh, Chevy Chase says in Caddyshack. How do you uh, how do you compare yourself to other gol- golfers by height? <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> yes, yes. We could quote. I'd love to quote Caddyshack all day. Uh, <laughs> me too. That's awesome. Um, oh God, what's you just made me think of something, but I'm gonna lose my train of thought. No. Um, all right. So this is another one, and I'm curious who your who your thoughts are about this. Who is your who's Big Larry's security detail? All right. So. You guys. I've, also been, I've also been putting time in this. The easy answer, Torino Walker. I'm not going oh, to mine too, but I'm not. I'm not actually going to do that. Okay. So I'm going to actually put as the minister of defense. I'm going to put Lyman DePriest, one Ooh. of if not one of if not the best defenders, and I'll stick by this. Ricky Moore, maybe one A, one B one of the best defenders to ever play at the University of Connecticut. Lyman DePriest was 6'5 and could guard all five positions. He's the, the head of my defense unit. Um, I love it. Now, I'm going to put another guy on the detail, and that's my guy, Rod Sellers. Love this guy. Mm-hmm. I've met him a bunch of times. He's the nicest dude in the world, but I know I've seen it in his eyes and I've seen it on the court when – Stuff goes down. That's the guy I want in my foxhole. And with him, with Lyman DePriest, he's going to be guarding my left and right. Now, as part of my security detail, I'm going to put Khalid El Amin on top of Rod Seller's shoulders like Master Blaster from <laughs> Mad Max. And all he's going to be doing is chirping. He's going to be chirping the whole time, causing stuff so that my boys DePriest and, and Sellers can clean up the mess. That's too funny. Um, one of my one of the, the reason why I came up with these questions is one of my many jobs in my life is I did I did security uh, for for a club and it's here locally and um, like I, like I said I'm not a very tall guy so I'm not super imposing I'm a normal size looking dude but we had two guys on our security detail who are six seven and six eight just absolute monsters okay, okay. and so it was my job to walk into when a when a fight started. It was my job to go in the mix early, get them separated, and then essentially give them an option. You can walk out quietly with me, or these two raptors over here on the left and the right are going to come in and swoop in and carry you out 
and I would kind of point them out. And most times people were very uh, amicable and were like, we'll just walk out with you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I feel, I feel like, I feel like that's what you're talking about is having Khalid be like, listen, we can, we can talk all you want, but my boys over here are going to kind of take care of business. So you, you, you tell me, I love that. Um, but that's, that is, uh, that's one of my, that's one of my favorite stories. I, I, that job is, was for the birds anyway. Um, all right. Last question. So, uh, I'm trying to think of which one I want to talk, talk through, uh, with you specifically, but I think this one is, is, is a good one. You can play either. I want you to pick the sport first and then I want you to pick your partner because I've used pickleball as an example. I've used tennis, but we, we mentioned volleyball. You can do beach volleyball. You can do pickleball or you can do tennis and pick who your, who your, who your partner would be. Wow. Um, I'm probably too short to be playing volleyball. So I, I, I'm going <laughs> to go pickleball too, just cause I'm old. Um, Love it. Pickleball. Wow. I'm going with uh, my guy, John Gwynn, the microwave, the mini microwave. Um, we're going to play pickleball together. Two guys that are about five, ten and three quarters, maybe. I don't know. Two guys that used to stutter, but two guys that still got our, our quickness, our, our quick twitch. I'm going with John Gwynn, and we're going to cause some damage. I love it. Um, tell me a quick story about um... – going to games on the road uh again we both talked about not being in connecticut like what's a what's a story you can tell first off and what's a story what's a story that you find funny uh anecdotal whatever uh about go you know going to a a a road gym or a road arena and uh and maybe you kind of dominating or final four whatever you want all right um carp lunch free free fall friday i i got my uh my claim to fame um Something I'm very proud of. At the time, I didn't know what it was, but uh, I went to the uh, the Battle of Atlantis in the Bahamas uh, a couple was it three years ago. Um, you know, to see UConn Auburn and just spend some time on vacation, and um, you know, I just had a blast there. But uh, the first game we were playing was the Auburn game, and uh, it was just a it was just a battle uh, back and forth, and. Uh, you know, I'm known to have a couple of cocktails before uh, and during the game, <laughs> uh, and uh, I was pretty, uh, I was pretty, uh, pretty lively that game. And uh, I was, yeah, I like to have uh, if I if I do have a section, I I like to have like a a section of six kind of uh, chairs that are empty next to me, so I can kind of run and kind of high five people, and uh, I, I'm just pretty active during the game and. Uh, you know, there's a couple of things that happened uh, during that game specifically that were pretty funny to me. The first one was um, I started running down the uh, down the row, and uh, it was it was the game was on Thanksgiving, if I can recall. Mm-hmm. It was it, does, uh, it was yeah. So uh, you know, we had all all had uh, and it was like the later game on Thanksgiving, so uh, we had all, all already eaten, and uh, I was running down the row, and I, I saw this older gentleman kind of like. Uh, a row behind me, but he was kind of like during a timeout, he was kind of like closing his eyes. Um, so I was like, ah, I was like, I'm going to get this guy, you know, <laughs> he was, he caught that. And I was, I was like, Hey buddy, you're like, let's go. Like I, I gave him like a little shake and then I returned back to my, my seat, like a few row of seats back. And uh, this guy just grabs me. He's like, he's like, uh, he's like, <laughs> he's like laughing. He's like, uh, do you know who that was that you just like shook and woke from a nap? I'm like, I, I don't know. I was like, uh, I was just some some older guy who was sitting there, and it was uh, it turned out it was Bill Murray. <laughs> no <Yes>. way. <laughs> so I like I kind of like my claim to fame. I know he wasn't napping, but uh, yeah, yeah, funny. He just kind of like was taking a little time during time out, and I guess I shook him, and I just tell <laughs> uh, I tell all my friends and family that I woke Bill Bill Murray up from a nap. Um, so that was funny. And then, uh, during that game too, we were, we were trying to get the, the crowd going and, um, Andrea Hurley came up to me and, and she kind of like started po- poking in me, uh, my chest and, uh, saying, we need more from you. And I was like, I'm giving it all I can. And, uh, she's like, I, I just want to hear whatever, 
And I'm like, hey, I'm going to lose my voice if I keep doing what I'm doing right now. Um, and uh, she's like, well, I'll, I'll get you tea um, tomorrow if, um, if, if you, like, get the crowd going. So, of course, I did. Um, I made a pretty funny – funny video afterwards with no voice of me in uh, Bahamas the next day. And uh, I kind of was like, Hey, Angela, you owe me some tea. Uh, and sure enough, when I got back, she had sent me like a care package of tea and some, uh, some coffee, uh, Yukon mugs and, and so forth. So awesome. I thought that was pretty cool. It just shows what kind of people they are and uh, what kind of person she is. And um, stuck to her words. She got my address and sent me some tea. <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. Um, I remember exactly where I was. I was at my sister's in New York um, watching that game on Thanksgiving. So I Great probably game, saw you and was right. like, Great look game. at this freaking guy. Look at this freaking guy. Uh, who, who knew? Who knew a few years later I'd, I'd be chatting with you on, <laughs> uh, on a podcast? Right. Uh, dude, I love that. Um, well, listen, before I go, I just want to say thank you for coming on and uh, sharing your stories and just like talking through a bunch of UConn stuff. I love sure. it. It's off season. All of us are clamoring for, for UConn. And guess what? We get some UConn things coming up with TBT. They play. If you guys haven't seen it yet, they're they're not playing on a national uh, like a broadcast on Saturday. It's on the TBT website. There's a link on the YouTube community page um, that you can find. If you can't find that for whatever reason, if you're a subscriber. You should you should be able to find it. But if you need it, go to TBT uh, the, the tournament .com and you can get directed to where the stars of stores are playing. Um, awesome. Before, before I go, are you watching ESPN on your TV all day? I have to turn on the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today. 24-7 sports programming for you. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions and news 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. This has been another episode of Locked On UConn. I'm your host, Mark Zanetto, for Big Larry, asking you guys to stay locked in, stay connected, make sure your toughness meter is always rising. What you got for me, Larry? Mark, out. Uh, one last thing, uh, a couple of things. Um, by the way, TBT, uh, I know it's on a gambling show, but uh, it's uh, plus 1,200 uh, for star stores of uh, stars of, of the uh, stores. Great deal. Uh, I put some 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 bread on that. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to the UConn women's basketball team, which I'm also a huge fan of. Absolutely. I'm putting in a ton of money on them futures. They're going to win it all this year. They are Bad, 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 bad. Uh, this uh, watch out for uh, Jana um, and Sarah Strong down low. Um, they're gonna they're gonna ball out. Pagey, Pagey, Python. Pagey Python. She start. She's hitting the. She hit the gym on the off season. I'm telling you right now. Um, shout out to the UConn women's basketball team. That's all I have to say. Thank hey, you. And, Thanks and, for having me. Yeah. No, I mean before we go, you you, you uh, if you don't know this, there will be a women's basketball show starting would, uh, in September. So I would love to come um, on that. Like, I, yeah, I, we're gonna I do it. Many, I watch as many UConn women's basketball uh, games as uh, as men's, and I'm I'm huge into it. Um, Bro, this is this is one of those things where this started as a show about UConn men's basketball, but there's so many things that are going on with UConn. And also, if if you think I can fit the men, the women, and the football team into like a thirty or thirty five minute show, I know we're going long today on a on a on a free for all Friday, but we can't do it. So I'm breaking it up into a twenty five minute show on the men, a twenty five minute show on the women, and then we're gonna do the football show once awesome. a week uh, going going forward in the fall. So be on the lookout for that. That was an awesome show. I really appreciate you guys. Stay locked in. Stay connected. Make sure your toughness meter is what. Always rising. And as always, go UConn.